good evening hello everyone i hope you're all doing well today i'm going to show you how you can uh, use ansible to install uh, php apache into ubuntu so let's get started uh, at first i'm going to create uh, one master instance and five slave instances so let's do the master for master, I want to keep Amazon Linux 2. I'm going to choose a key pair here. That's fine. And I'm going to choose MEC2 load. Okay. Launch instance. So this instance I will keep as a master instance and then i'm going to launch uh, five more instances so click launch um, let's make it five these are slaves so uh, this one i want to keep ubuntu so this is actually the application server where i'm going to install the apache php etc T2 micro, that's fine. I'm going to just use Ansible. HTTP, HTTPS. And this is the key pair. And this is launch instance. I have taken five because now you will understand that how, uh, what is the benefit of using Ansible. Previously, what I had to do is I had to manually log into each of the server and install Apache, PHP, etc. But now using Ansible, I can just do that with one playbook, right? So that's the beauty. So uh, let's refresh. We just wanted to view the running ones. So this is the master one. So at first we need to install the uh, Ansible into the master and also set up the SSH key pairs. So let's log into the Ansible master. Yeah, it takes some time because I have tried to launch six instances. My plan is to next time create a video with 50 instances. <laughs> that will be really, really exciting to see how Ansible manages 50 instances very efficiently. So let's connect. I have a blog. Uh, I'm trying to write a blog here for this part. So far, it's not finished yet. Meanwhile, all the instructions will be available here. I also have a GitHub link which have instructions for the playbook. So this is our uh, master. So I'm going to log root privilege. And then what I'm going to do is Amazon Linux extras enable municipal two. Oops. I just put an extra space. Okay, it is enabled. Now I'm going to run yum install Ansible. This will install the Ansible. So that's good. If you remember that AWS by default blocks the user password based authentication and it's by default enables key pair based authentication. So uh, for that reason, we need to generate a key pair into this master instance and add that uh, key pair public key to the child instances so that they can easily communicate via SSH. One of the beauty of Ansible is that they don't uh, need any kind of agent installation. That means you don't need to have a, any agent running on your uh, child or slave instances. It will communicate over the SSH uh, protocol so all the commands that is running into the child or slave 
that will be done by SSH. That's that's the beauty of Ansible. Now uh, let's try to do first see if Ansible is installed properly. Ansible version. Okay, two point <clears throat> two point nine point two three. That's good. Then I'm going to generate a key pair. So. Uh, Uh, that is that the command is SSH keygen uh, minus T R S A. You can keep everything as default, and that's it. It has generated a random key pair. So, what is my key pair? It is available in uh, slash root dot SSH, then ID. RSA dot pub. So this is the key pair. We are we have to copy this for future use. Let's copy this part. Okay. Now um so let's see if our other instances are up and running. Okay, our slips are also running fine. Now I'm going to go to systems manager. Why systems manager? Because uh, systems manager gives an automation for running shell script into instances. Using that process, I'm going to uh, copy or I'm going to update the authorized keys for the slaves by running one command. That is uh, quite easy because if you have like 50 instances, then you have to log in all those 50 instances and then add the authorized key pair this is quite uh, cumbersome. So I am in systems manager. So it's one liner. Just go to run command. And then over there, I'm going to choose AWS shell script command type. So enter run command, uh, platform type Linux. I'm going to go to second page and here is the run shell script then uh, what i have to do is uh, this is also given in my personal blog that echo then ssh key then to arrow sign and then the file path so similarly echo then ssh key i have pasted then uh, arrow sign and then i can just copy the path here so I just adding my key pair into the uh, child. Uh, oh, shift. Uh, something else. Paste. OK, so what we'll do is it will uh, append this uh, public key into the uh, child's authorized keys. That means we are authorizing this key to access the child via SSH. Okay, uh, then I'm going to choose the instances manually. I'm choosing manually because I forget to add tags. But if you given if you have given tags like slave, slave uh, project slave or instance slave, then you could have chosen via the tags. But I haven't used tags, so I can just copy these and ignore the master part. So I've copied all the five slaves. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, that's all about it. Run. Uh, let's refresh. It's done. It's simple. And now I will be able to connect all the instances. Let's see if I able to connect to this slave. So SSH. You see, I have a, I was I'm able to connect to that slave. It's pretty simple. I'm going to exit to the slave, clear the screen. What I have to do is now I need to modify the host file for the Ansible and add the server IP addresses. So it's pretty simple. VI, etc, and simple hosts. Probably go to the bottom of the screen and add your IP addresses. I usually give it a name, web 
if you have different naming, you can do that. So this is my first IP. Then go for the second one. Go for the third one. I have to find out to be to automate this as well. Let me know in a comment how can we automate this. It seems like a manual job, but if you know a better way to add this, please put it in the video comment section and uh, probably I can use that in my next videos. It is a bit uh, annoying. annoying thing is that you have to copy all those IP addresses. Okay, the, what why I have copied the pub, private IP is this because if you shut it down and restart again, then the public IP is changed, but for some reason, private IP stays as well. So that's why I haven't uh, copied the public IP, but rather than private IP. Another benefit of using private IP is it's, it's uh, like you can do that internal VPC. So uh, I have added the host files. Now let's see, make a ping comment. The command is ansible ansible all module ping. Can we do ping? Well, now uh, probably have you will see this and you get uh, shocked why this is saying cannot connect. Well, the reason can be is that uh, this is uh, maybe the server is not really ready yet or uh, it is just not uh, started process so don't get panicked and uh, just uh, try to uh, rerun it one more time let's see if this is changing if it not that's also fine just uh, try to ssh uh, the ips specifically like for example this one Connected and if I now ping, uh, it should be yeah. There is also now shows success. So there is now uh, you don't need to get panicked because uh, probably they uh, they have some sort of things that is not started, so that's why they cannot connect. Just if you see that this message, then just uh, do the SSH and uh, like. Uh, For example, this is 31, 31 one, one seven six SSH. Yes, I'm going to connect. Okay, I'm connected successfully. Now if I ping, I will probably see that three. Just try to uh, just SSH all of those. This is... Copy, paste, SSH, and that's it. One more time, ping. We have how many? One, two, three, four. One more, just last one. This is the last one. Copy. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to run it one more time, the ping command, and it should be able to connect all of the files. That's good. So now let's clear the screen. I'm going to uh, uh, now install PHP Apache. How can I do that? I have written an Ansible playbook here. You can copy that from my GitHub profile or I will also give it to my website. So just copy this. Um, 
create a playbook. So vi nginx dot uh, yaml by ml uh, paste the content and run it. The command is uh, sorry ansible playbook nginx dot yaml run. So uh, what we'll do, it's, it will try to install Apache 2 web server, and uh, then it will install PHP, and then it will install some extensions of the PHP, and that's it. So uh, if I go to the description of this uh, playbook, it says install Apache 2, that's fine, start Apache 2, then install PHP 7.4, so I'm giving the PT repository for PHP 7.4 and installing PHP 7.4. And then these are PHP extensions which you are uh, required. So, okay, trust. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, you see, I have just uh, written one command and then I was able to install those things into all of those uh, slaves. <laughs> slave instances uh, very efficiently. Let's say if I wanted to upgrade the PHP to 7.5, now I can just update my playbook and run the playbook again. It should be able to install that, right? It is uh, uh, quite uh, efficient to use Ansible to manage your instances. Uh, whether if you have to manually do that, you might sometimes miss out for example, I wanted to have a list of extensions like these. So uh, it is quite cumbersome that probably have installed this four and not the five. So uh, this is a, a good way to install all the necessary extensions. This is for PHP, but we have something else. That's also fine. Okay, so we are all okay. No, nothing failed. And let's try to verify. So um, let's see, just copy public IP. Okay, the uh, Apache Ubuntu is showing fine. I have another uh, playbook for copying files. So what I'll do, I will just uh, uh, create an info.php file. So let's get the file. So at this moment, I don't see the PHP version. So I will create info.php and I will keep PHP info over there. Okay, then I'm going to create this cp.yml, a playbook for copying the files from my master to the slaves. So, it is simple. It is copying input.php to the destination bar www.html input.php. So for each of the slave, we will copy this info.php file if we run this playbook. So let's try to run it. The command is ansible playbook uh, cp.yml. It is gathering the informations and That was my long description. I have to update that. Anyway, so now if we try to view it in PHP, we should be able to see the PHP version, right? Also the extensions, all those things are there. It's pretty simple. That's uh, quite amazing because now we can do a lot of things with Ansible and with just one playbook. Let's assume that some of the uh, like peoples have manually logged into one of the slaves. Let's view another slave. Well, slave instance, not slave. So, and let's see, that is also same. So they all have the same exact PHP extension, PHP version, all those things. And for some reason, someone has logged into that instance and deleted those. Let's say deleted Apache or deleted uh, like, uh, PHP 
you can just run this uh, playbook again. If it's missing, it will be installed. That's great. For example, if I wanted to add a new one instance, I can I launch a new one and then I can just uh, run the playbook into that part as well. It will install exactly the same. So that's it for today. I hope this video will help you to get started with uh, Ansible. Before you uh, close this example, delete the instances so that you don't get built with heavy building. I'm going to terminate that. Terminate. That's it. So it's a very easy example. Try to follow the instructions that I have given and uh, just uh, launch maybe 10, 20, 50, whatever the maximum limit and try to automate this. It's fun. It's really a fun project that you manages 50 projects, 50 instances with just single one command. And that is quite awesome. Thank you. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I, I, I see that a lot of people are viewing my tutorials, but they're not subscribing it. So I beg you to subscribe and that will help me to grow more videos and create more contents for you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.